of Ketu South. Uh, in the first place, you can see that I'm actually very surrounded by an army of Ketu South leadership who are here. And you will not be surrounded by an army of leadership from the Ketu South if they do not think that you actually did a good job when you were a leader for them. So that's the first one. Two, uh, the issues you raised listen to, maybe the salt issue you said, that issue is actually a, a very difficult issue, and we did our best to try to resolve it. Don't forget, as a, as a member of parliament, you are not directly in charge of the day-to-day -day administration of a municipality. That falls under what you call the, the district assembly. What you do as a member of parliament is to try to create facilitation for that answers to be found. And we did, we did the best we can to be able to bring together the community, the chiefs, and then the company in order to find a resolution to the issue. Of course, you understand whenever there are issues that different people have different interests, you have to find ways in which you can marry those various interests. I think by the time I was living as a, as a member of parliament, we actually brought that issue to, to, to a close. I think the issue emerged again in recent time, I guess because of some incident that happened. I think something to do with some people who died. Yeah, some people who died, and that brought the anger of the community uh, towards uh, finding solution. I wish that uh, the current leadership in Ketu South, that's the municipal chief executive, together with my, my successor, will be able to work together with the community, with the chiefs, in order to find solutions to it. So the issue about Ketu South not being a happy place, that clearly cannot be, because I won't convincingly in both, in both situations when I won, I ran two times in Ketu South and actually had no issue at all winning both elections. In every, in every constituency, you, you will never be able to make everybody happy no matter how well you do. Even John Mahama said, as an MP in Bali, Bamboy, I can tell you that it's not every person who thought that he was an angel there. Jina Sienukitia, as an MP three times, definitely there were people who were not happy with him. So that would definitely happen all the time. But your job as a member of parliament is to make sure that you have majority on your side, and that's what we did. And uh, we, we did our best, led to a lot of development for the community, and uh, I'm proud today about the fact that uh, through my instrumentality, Ketu South saw some of the fastest development that could ever be found. In terms of satisfying every individual, it's not possible for an MP to be able to do that. But what you can do is to create collective development, because that's what you can do. You cannot make every single individual happy. It's not possible. You can't get a job for every single person, but you can at least create opportunity for as many people as possible to see a collective development, and that's what the job of an MP should really be about. Uh, the second one about uh, uh, what's the name, the Baumia issue. And what I said is this, that anyone who has shown beyond doubt to be a perennial liar, who lied in opposition, and who has come into office and continues to lie. In fact, today if you're talking about the biggest liar in politics today, the first name that comes up in the mind of everybody is Baumia. And that is not a lie at all. Now when somebody lies that much, when that person is being accused, you're invariably are knowing that this guy being accused is coming to again do what? The same lies. Now. Of all the people who are in power, I'm surprised that only Baumia's name should be coming up. Why him? Why no other person? There are so many other people who are in office. Why is that minister mentioning only Baumia? That should tell you that there's much more than meets the eye. It is true that the opportunity is not going to be given for, for proper investigation to be done. But as far as I'm concerned, knowing his history as a liar, knowing how perennially he has lied in this country, I would not be surprised at all that what is being said about him actually will carry. Because as far as I'm concerned, if you lie that much, if I'm being told that you are a crook, I'm being told that you are a thief, I'm being told that you are corrupt, I will have no doubt about it. Because the biggest, the biggest what you call corruption is a corruption that starts from inability to tell the truth. People think that corruption is all about money. The first corruption is your inability to tell the truth. When you prove yourself to be such a perennial liar, you are a corrupt person. And that is the beginning of the corruption of Baumia as an individual. He's generally a corrupt person because only corrupt people lie continually. And that's what he does. So for me, I wouldn't be surprised at all that he's simply being exposed. His lies are catching up with him. And somebody within his own government is pointing to him because the person didn't know anybody was listening. He didn't mention anybody. He didn't mention any other minister. He didn't mention any other personality in the office. Just Baumia. I would, I would not be surprised that there's more to that. That's not for me to say. That's not for me to say. I would say that we need to accord uh, those uh, allegations serious consideration because it cannot just be by accident that that minister mentioned no other person but Baumia.